Hello. Back at the workbench again, trying to do some repair. And the subject is this nice set of Howard Light by Honeywell uh, earmuff, ear protectors, and radio. So this is a really nice combination. I use it a bunch if I'm doing work in the yard where I want hearing protectors or using power tools or things like that. And these have worked wonderfully for about five years. And then a few days ago, I had them on and they just made this buzzing sound and stopped working. And came in, changed the batteries, that didn't do anything, so I thought we'd take them, uh, take them apart and see what we can figure out. And I did a little quick bit of investigation, normally. So these are kind of interesting. The, the padded ear parts actually come off and are replaceable, but usually something like this is really a pain in the ass to get into. Uh, but I found that that may, may not be the case. So I uh, decided to spend a little time on the video. So uh, what we have is we have the earmuff part here, then we have a plastic part, and then we have what's clearly in an injected, mo 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 <laughs> injected molded shell. So what I found surprisingly was um, I expected this seam here to be heat, wheel, heat welded or solvent welded or something. That's the way typical, typical things like this are designed. But it turns out that it's actually not. Um, we can, the whole thing comes out. And I guess that's part of, they make what's called a hygiene kit. And that is apparently this part and these padded parts here. So the fact that you can take it apart is a design feature. Okay. And inside we have what, what looks, uh, I don't know if you can see it. What I'm going to do, I obviously can't totally, so i these come loose. They do not come loose. Oh, okay. So I thought this was a screw here, but I'm pretty sure it's just a plastic shaft where you put it over and then it spreads out. So I'm going to see if I can, rather than break it, I'm going to see if I can compress it. Um, it would be much easier to deal with this if this other one wasn't in the way. And I don't want to get into disassembling the rest. Okay, so that was pretty fruitless. Um, I think they, I might be able to get them to come off. Let's try one more thing. Maybe a... This whole thing will be kind of useless if I break pieces off. Yeah, I don't think those are, are meant to come apart. So if I push the antenna through there. get it almost visible. Okay, so what do we have here? We obviously have, there's a little uh, stereo output jack. 
uh, actually a stereo input jack. One of the things you can do is you can run this on these speakers. If you don't want to use the radio, you can plug into the jack from your phone or uh, presumably Walkman or whatever device you had. Um, let's pull off the speaker. What I'm hoping is that we'll find something really simple, like we had one of the power wires break. And maybe I can just run a new power wire from the battery across. Okay, so three screws out. Out comes the speaker. We have another little bit of foam. Okay, that is unexpected. Okay, so we have this is little part here, this is for the AM radio, uh, that's the AM antenna, you can actually see it's uh, soldered in. I'm assuming we have a little FM radio antenna over here. Um, the real surprise is over here we have a, what's that, 10, 15, a 64 pin microcontroller um, which looks to be an Atmel ATM something I can't quite read it uh, probably an AVR uh, why oh why would you need a 64 pin microcontroller for this device and I have a guess um, I think they make a line of these and I think the the higher end ones end up uh, having additional features uh, like noise reduction or things like that um, but this particular one yeah doesn't really make any sense okay so we're gonna go in deeper and I'm gonna take out the screws holding the circuit board in I understand a little better now why this thing costs Kind of a ridiculous amount. It costs about 60 bucks, which does seem like a lot until you start looking at the uh, circuit board. Another one hiding underneath the AM antenna. Well, they have really, really gone uh, overboard. So I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we had one to three screws holding this in and then uh, we have little uh, holes I don't know if I can get close enough probably can't see or right here next to where the antenna is sitting there's a little uh, plastic piece that uh, is molded into the case and it also gives positive retention of the uh, PC board so, we're going to need a little persuasion. So let's see if I can bend that back. That'll be enough to get the other one on the 
outside. Oh, that's not that bad. As usual, this is one of those things where you need four hands. And the first one returned. Okay, just to make this a little bit easier. So there's a problem that they keep wanting to move and I can't get access. So what I'm gonna do is take a zip tie and tie together Headset in kind of this overlapping way. Okay. So now at least I can kind of hold it level. Let me go for the ones on this side. Maybe if you actually took out that, that uh, other screw that you thought was meaningless, uh, maybe then you'll have some luck. Okay, I'm going to go to the bottom, see if we can take off the volume knob, which I hope is just press on. volume knob was pressed on and then we're gonna have a little nut there okay those little tabs I was trying to take off I don't think they hold the board in I think they hold the board to the buttons on the back so And here we go. So, we have a little uh, LCD display. And then the four buttons kind of housed in this uh, nice little injected molded piece. This is a nicely built product for what it is. So that means um, U2, I'm just going to guess, is the driver, 
you can see all the pins, I don't know if you can see all the pins down here at the bottom, uh, are for the LCD display. And we certainly have a separate driver chip for that. And that leaves us with two others. Uh, one probably radio, one probably power. Just a guess. And then a huge honking microcontroller to do the other stuff. Now I'm not gonna, I could take this part off, but I'm going to not to because I'd have to unsolder the, or at least move back the LCD, and uh, I don't see any reason to do that. But the first thing we can do, we've finally gotten power coming in. Okay, so right here in this, remember this bundle of wires, they come from the other side. Um, there are six of them, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'd expect two to go to the speaker on that side, and two to go to power, and I do not know what the other two are for. Uh, maybe they're not for this model, maybe they're for something else. Okay, so the first really obvious thing we're going to do is turn on our multimeter and check and see if we actually have power coming across from the battery. I'm going to be very disappointed if uh, I disassemble this whole side and I should have just done the battery side on the other. And yes, I did put new batteries in. And the winner is cross battery and ground. The winner is zero volts. Well, that could be a good thing. It could be a very annoying thing as well. So that either means we have a wire break coming across, or we just have uh, A bad connection on this side. So let's nicely put that back. I'm not going to assemble it yet, but we'll just kind of put it back in the case so we're not messing with it. And let's see what we can find on the other side. Pieces come off. Two connectors that say battery plus, battery minus. So that's very strange. I'm not seeing any power there. Let's uh, just do something perhaps one should have done right at the beginning. Two batteries were directly out of a new Costco pack. Huh. 1.5 volts. And 1.5 volts, a little more. And they are correctly attached. The spring part inside looks fine. Nothing.
So I think I figured out one thing. I think maybe the power wires are redundant. But we'll just kind of see. Speaker comes out. Curiouser and curiouser. So, I think there are six wires there. I think uh, they have a noise-canceling version of this. Um, and there's two wires here for a microphone to be on this side, which would be useful. Okay, strangely, across battery, I'm getting like 0.2 volts, which would suggest that... We have bad connections. Open the battery compartment again. Well, I have done this numerous times. I remember looking at the bottom. This is one of those multiple hands kind of things. The connections at the bottom are just beautiful. They work just fine. This is one of the reasons you keep a power supply around. We're going to a power supply. Tune it up to uh, like 2.6 volts. Um, it would need to run on that because batteries go that low. And we're just going to uh, connect across uh, to those pins and see if we can get it to turn on. I really don't know why the batteries aren't, uh, aren't doing what I would expect them to do. It's almost like it's a mechanical issue. They aren't pressing down right, which is weird. Okay, well that's a really good sign. Three volts across those connectors, and everything worked fine, and it came on. 
So that means we have a problem here with the battery. So I'm going to reassemble the electronic side uh, just to have it reassembled. Um, and then we'll dig more into, into this side. Back again. So I got the uh, complex side reassembled and tested and verified that it worked. So now we need to go back and troubleshoot and figure out why the battery contacts aren't working. And this is kind of confusing. So this is the back and you can see there are two little springs here. And we can take a set of batteries, kind of push them and see that, well, the springs seem okay. And the springs seem like they would make contact on the right part of the batteries. And unless these batteries have changed significantly, um, I don't know why they wouldn't work. So we're going to try put the batteries in. And in case you're wondering, there are two right here and here, here and here on the guide. They're very clear uh, embossed uh, molded in directions that show you which way you want them. So I'm pretty sure it's not that. So the first thing we're going to try to do is hold these in and bridge across the top um, with an appropriate metallic device. Maybe I can use my pliers. And we'll see if we turn on. That is really surprising. I expected, of course, this part here, it doesn't seem like it could break, but I kind of expected that that would work pretty well. I'm looking for something. Something else to bridge. Well, let's go with the... Overkill, yeah. Set of banana plugs. I can hold those against. That will clearly Okay, so that obviously worked. So if we get enough pressure here, there's nothing wrong inside here, which really means it's probably something with these springs. And looking at them, kind of strangely, they probably can't see, but they don't go flat like that. They go like this. Even if you think the back plate, yeah, maybe, maybe they're off a little. So, um, first obvious thing to do, we're going to just spread these out a little bit. I'm going to make them a little longer. So that's maybe, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch, a little bit more.
So this is now making very little sense. And I'm pretty sure as I press, I'm pressing there and I can feel the springs contacting. the obvious. So that would suggest we're looking at something mechanical. So let's do a little measuring. I know where this edge is, and I know this edge lines up with there. And the tip of the battery is 2.7 centimeters. If I go to the edge of the spring, we see that that's 2.3. Let me try and bin these springs. I think they're supposed to be a little bit more in line. Everything in this radio, the, the whole battery container uh, design is just horrible. Um, you're supposed to just push in one direction instead of prying. You notice I pry it away because if you just push, uh, bad things happen. That looks better in line. Let's try this one. This time we're going to try something different. We're going to what happens if I'm not latched? Well, that now says we're getting the full 3 volts. Okay, that was... to no power. And back again. 
Um, I may have figured it out. Uh, what I did, I went down right here at the bottom. Um, you can see there are uh, four little solder joints there. Two for plus, two for minus. Behind that, there's some metal tabs that go out, and that's where the batteries actually contact. And when I pulled the circuit board off, I found that they were uh, a little flaxy, which kind of surprised me. That suggested that maybe I had some cold solder joints there. And remember when I first pulled it out, we saw like three volts there, which made very little sense. Um, and since we have those connections, and then we have the springy ones on the back side, and I don't think the springy ones are just that likely to fail. So I went and touched those up, uh, refold them with the iron, and seems like we're working again. So the rest of this, the electronics seems like it was pretty well made. This battery part is just not made well at all. Um, the fact that that you have stresses from inside the battery case down on this side, and you have that long lever arm that can go back and forth, that's kind of asking for uh, bad solder joints. Uh, solder isn't supposed to be for mechanical, it's only supposed to be for electrical. And for this, there's no mechanical attachment. So I'm thinking that's uh, probably what's, what led to that. So I'll put it back put it back together and then we'll be all done. And here we are back together and all functional again. Um, one little note, these little pads, the ear pads that come off are actually not symmetrical. Uh, you notice at the bottom it's kind of straight. Let me see where you can see this. The bottom, this is a straight angle, and at the top here it's kind of angled, angled down. Uh, I think this is the angled down so that your uh, safety glasses can more easily pass by because they're on top of your ears. Uh, so less pressure up there and it doesn't crush, doesn't crush quite as well. So you want to make sure you do that. So all back together. And they work just fine. These are particularly nice in that they have an uh, idea of tuning, but you have presets. So, uh, a nice but pricey set. About 60 bucks now. So, thanks. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.